Wow. Wow. Hey Amen. Go ahead, take your seat. You can take your seat. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes uh, as we get ready to get into the word of the Lord. I just need a few moments of your time. I know that it's already late. Um, we do have church long, but we don't have church this long. It's only because for many people, this is our New Year's service, New Year's Eve service. Uh, this is our first service of the year. And so we really appreciate your patience. I'm really excited to get into the word of the Lord. I'm beginning a brand new series this morning. Um, and I really believe that it's going to be a mantra for your entire year. It's called Minding My Business. Hear me. The only way you are going to be successful in 2023, you're going to have to mind your own business. There is no way you're going to be able to be focused on what other people are doing, enamored by what other people are making, by what other people are producing. Hear me. You're going to have to break the addiction of competition in order for you to be successful this year. Come on, I want y'all to say, Lord, give me supernatural focus. Come on, y'all. Say, Lord, give me tunnel vision. Hear me. You can't go to the left or to the right. You are going to have to be focused on the assignment that God gave you. And I'm really excited to begin to build this concept. Hear me. I'm a series preacher, meaning that I don't try to give you everything in one moment. I like to build. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. And so that's how we're going to build. So we're going to have our first installment today. But this sentence that the Lord is building, even though he begins it today, he's going to continue to add to it week after week. And so I really appreciate you being here today. You may be from out of town, but even if you are from out of town, do me a favor, next week watch online because I believe what God is saying today, he's going to continue to say. And before I go further, I want to make sure that we greet all of those that are watching online. Can y'all do me a favor and put our hands together for our online community? Come on, we greet y'all. We appreciate y'all. We know that you wanted to be in the building, but you're watching online. Maybe you're cooking. Maybe you're driving. Maybe you're at work. But we appreciate you watching and worshiping with us. We pray that you had an opportunity to worship, not just through a demonstration, not just through songs, but also through giving. We want you to know that you can become a part of our church even online. We are building our e family, our online family, our online embassy church, and we would love for you to be a part of it. So please get connected. You can type partnership in the chat or type anything that you're believing God for, and we have intercessors that are going to partner and pray for you. Come on, everybody say amen. All right, let's get our Bibles out, and I'm going to ask you to stand for the last time before we leave. Come on, let's stand to our feet. We like to reverence the Word of God by standing on our feet. We believe that nothing can move, can change, but by the Word of God. The scripture says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one jot or tittle of his word shall ever be removed. Come on, somebody say, I love the word. 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 Here at Embassy City, we are people that love the word of God. We love good preaching. We love revelation. I need my front row to shout at me. I said, we love the word of God. See, I said, we, we need some believers in here. Amen. We love revelation. We love the depth of God's word. We believe that God's word has power. Amen. Come on, y'all. So hear me. We believe that nothing moves without the word of God. So we believe in the word of God. And we want to make sure that we start this new year off right. Let's go to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Let's work. Let's go to Luke chapter 2, and we're going to go down to verse number 43. Luke chapter 2. The gospel according to Luke chapter 2. And let's, get, let's go down to verse number 43. Calvin and Shay, thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate you. I love you. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, my cousin, who's also a pastor here in the city, Pastor Antonio Grissom, where are you at? Let me just say hey to you. Where are you at? I see you. Thank you so much, cuz, for being here. Amen. Can y'all put your hands together for him? If you can. I know you're holding your Bible. But I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming, man. Thank you so much for co coming. I remember when I first started preaching. I don't know if you remember that. When I first started preaching and you invited me to your church, I didn't know what I was doing and you still love me. 
Hey, you got to bless God for people that gave you a chance. For people that just trusted you without a rhyme or a reason. So thank you so much for being here. Luke chapter 2, when you got verse number 43, let me know you got it by saying, I got it. It reads, and when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, notice you can't leave a thing until you fulfill the days, right? You can't move on until you fulfill your assignment. So the scripture says that when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother knew it not or knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey. Look at how far they traveled. They went a day's journey and they sought him among their kinfolk and among their acquaintances. And when they found him not, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's an indictment. When you can't find Jesus around your family. When you can't find Jesus around your friends. They sought for him. And they could not find them. When they could not find them, they turned back. They turned, somebody say, turn back. They turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all they that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. His mother said unto him, Son, why did you do this to us? Why have you dealt with us this way? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. He said unto them, How is it that you're looking for me? How is it that ye sought me? Did you not know? Now, the King James Version is a bit hard. It says, wist ye not. But it literally means, did you not know? I must be about my father's. Hear me. They going to look for you where they found you last year. And you will not be there. And they going to take it personal. You will be surprised how many spouses are praying that their spouse don't come to the altar. Oh yeah, there are booze and bays in here praying, please don't get delivered. Because I may not have a place to stay. But you got to let them know what God is doing in your life. It ain't personal. This is not about you. This is not an indictment to who you are. What God is doing in me is not personal. And so I want to preach the first message of the year from the message, it's not personal. It's not personal. Come on, I want you to say it three times. It's not personal. It's not, I want you to get used to it. It's not personal. Why you didn't call me back? It's not personal. Why you not available to hang out? It's not, I'm not going to the club. It's not, I'm not talking about your husband with you. It's not personal. I'm just different. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and we thank you for revelation. Change us by your word. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Come on, everybody say amen. Amen. Come on, take your seat. Take your seat. Give me a few minutes and I'll get you out of here at some point. (laughs) Today's a pretty difficult day, um, especially if you're a preacher, because when you have a service like this, everybody comes with their own expectation. And I'm not talking about expectation as it relates to what level God moves on. I'm just talking about what to expect in general. For some people, they didn't go to New Year's Eve service. This is their party, so they're ready. They got the liquor in their in they pocketbook. Amen. They are ready to party. Let me get out of here. I'm about to go to brunch. I'm ready to turn up. For other people, you are fasting. You are preparing uh, for a supernatural spiritual year. People have different expectations, and as a preacher, it becomes hard to preach without establishing proper context, because if you preach without context, you will always be misheard and misunderstood. So the job of any good preacher is to establish context for his message. 
to establish context for the revelation so that it makes sense and so that it's accurate. So allow me to establish context. Everybody say context. I need a few minutes to establish context, and I'm going to do this by utilizing a comedic technology called a setup. In, in comedy, they have what they call a setup. If you don't have a good setup, usually the punchline doesn't land. And so you got to have a setup. So I need three setups for you. Three setups. All right, come on. Setup number one. Setup number one, if you're taking notes, I am a note-taking preacher, so I want to make sure that you're taking good notes. I may say a lot of stuff that your mind doesn't catch. I want to make sure that when you go home and you study it, you can get more revelation. Amen? So I want you to take good notes. But first setup. The first setup is called breaking the fourth wall. Now, for many of you, you may not know me. This may be your first time getting to know me. Um, I got my degree in theater. And in theater, there is a term called the fourth wall. The fourth wall. And the fourth wall is an invisible barrier that stands between the presenter, the performer, and the audience. If you go to a theater, if you go to a play, the people on the stage almost act as if the people in the audience don't exist. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Brian, the only way the church is going to be successful in 2023, it has to break the fourth wall. When we went through COVID, COVID gave us a level of practicality that the church didn't have. The church would come in, we would ignore people, we would just go through our routine without fully engaging people. But what the pandemic did is the pandemic, it shed in all of our facades, all of the smoke and mirrors, and we had to have the ability to minister to people for real. If you were coming to church during COVID, you needed ministry for real. You didn't want fake church. You didn't want inauthentic church. You didn't want people smiling at you, but they really did not want to have community with you. You needed something real. And so the Lord gave us a level of practicality during COVID that we need. We have to be willing to speak directly to people, not over their heads, not under their issue, but directly to people. That's my first setup. My second setup is this, is that in order for the church to be successful and effective, the church must be prophetic. Now, when I say that, you may have had bad experiences with a prophetic church or with prophets. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about somebody saying, hey, I got the word of the Lord for you. I'm not talking about somebody calling out a name and a phone number. But when I say prophetic, I'm talking about bringing the word of God into present day. You will be surprised how many believers don't read or apply the Bible because they don't feel like it matters. They don't feel like it's relevant. They don't feel like it works. But the word works if you work it. Amen. There is a level of application to the word of God, but it takes you taking the word of God and bringing it into your present day. And I want to say it like this, not just prophetic, the church must become spiritual. What a thought is that? We should be the leading spiritual industry on the face of the planet, but more people go to psychics than the church for spirituality. I'm talking about Christians will go get their horoscope read, read before they come down to an altar because they trust the spirituality in the world more than they trust the spirituality in church. And if the church is going to be successful, we must become spiritual. Hear me, y'all. There should be no other institution on the face of the planet that can help navigate men and women through the vicissitudes of life other than the church. We should be able to teach men how to be a good husband, teach women how to be a good wife, teach children how to grow in the admonition of the Lord. But we have passed those things on to therapists and teachers. Oh, Brian, you better calm down. We expect the school counselor to do what the parents should do. And then when we don't raise them up the right way, then we bring them to the church and say, cast the devil out of them. Why cast the devil out of them when you're going to put them back in when you go home? Y'all, God wants to build an inheritance of spirituality. Well, we know what prayer is and we know what it does. And then we pass it to our children. Well, we know what laying on of hands is and we know what it does and we pass it to our children. Well, we know what speaking in tongues is. We know what it does and we pass it on to our children. 
Are y'all here? The Lord wants to give you, I want you to write this down, an inheritance of spirituality. The church must become spiritual. My third setup. My third setup. The church must become spiritual, breaking the fourth wall. But my third setup is we, we are at a crossroads. I'm talking about nationally. As a species, as a church, we are at a, at a crossroads. I'm telling y'all, man, developing this message was so hard because there are so many things, so many things happening. Number one, it's the first Sunday of the year. We're going into a brand new year. We're coming out of 2022, going into 2023. And as a preacher, I felt like I needed to address the old year and address the new year. We're at a, cross, a crossroads. Not only that, embassy, we're in a brand new building. We're in a brand new season. We're in a brand new chapter. And as a preacher, I felt like I need to address that. I need to speak to that. But how do I speak to that and speak to the new year? It's like just a whole bunch of stuff happening. And then, number three, I'm starting a brand new series. So I'm like, Lord, you want me to start a new series, start giving them new instruction, But we're in a brand new building. You want me to speak prophetically to a brand new building? And then we're at the beginning of a new year. You want me to speak prophetically to a new year? How in the world am I supposed to address all of this when it just feels like everything is mixed up and crossed up? And if y'all can be honest, there are many people under the sound of my voice that are, you're at a crossroads. If you don't make the right decision, your business may not be here by the end of 2023. If you don't make the right decision, your family may not be together. I'm going to preach before I leave. By the end of 2023, if you can be honest, you are at a, at, a, at a crossroads. And the reason that's so significant, because the writer of Luke is very careful and particular to let us know that Mary and Joseph are at a crossroads. They are in a place where they have to make a major decision. They have been traveling for an entire day and they realize, wait a second, Jesus is not with us. How long have you been traveling? Before you found out. Bro, I've been doing life without Jesus. And can we be honest? I don't know where I lost them. I'm talking about, I was just doing life, trying to get married, trying to find a job, trying to do what I knew to do. And then I looked up and my prayer life was gone. You ever tried to pray and that's when you realize you ain't prayed in a long time? Father God, I don't even know what to say. Because hear me, the stuff you don't use, you lose. The scripture says when Jesus was 12 years old, all of a sudden, it is now the feast of Passover. And they are going to make their way to Jerusalem to worship. When they get there, there's so much stuff happening. I'm talking about people are buying offerings and selling offerings. There is a book that I've been reading called The Mind of Christ. And in this book, the writer of the book, he details this particular event. He says this is the first time Jesus is going to Jerusalem. Now, we're not talking about him getting on the donkey, riding in, them talking about Hosanna, Hosanna. That's going to be his last time. But his first time is when he's 12 years old. They take him to Jerusalem. Now, you got to understand, this is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Now, coming to Jerusalem, watching people buy and sell lambs. Now, you got to follow me. Jesus is entering Jerusalem during the feast of Passover. They are buying lambs, killing them. And Jesus is walking through the streets of Jerusalem, watching people do to the lamb what eventually they're going to do to him. He is getting a picture of his purpose. He is getting a preview of his assignment. I'm talking about 12 years old. Why does this feel familiar. I'm talking about 12 years old. I don't know why, but I feel comfortable around this. 
Because this is the reason for which I was born. And he finds himself in the temple. Watch me. He gets lost in the temple. Now, the temple ain't big. So how did he get lost in the temple? Now, I need you to hear me because this is a word for you. The only way your business is going to grow, you're going to have to get lost in your business. You're going to have to get lost in your calling. You're going to have to get lost in your gift, in your anointing, in your family. When people look for you, they shouldn't be able to find you all the time. Why is it that every time I log on Facebook, you're on Facebook? You ain't got nothing to do. You ain't got no business. You ain't got no, you ain't got no family. You ain't got no friends. You always online? Available. That's what it say. Available. <laughs> Hear me. You're going to have to learn to change your status to unavailable. Uh, 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 Come on, somebody say, I'm unavailable. I'm unavailable. For all the drama, I'm unavailable. For all the gossip, I'm unavailable. For all the negativity, I'm unavailable. Somebody say, change your status. They got so busy, man. There's so much happening in Jerusalem. I can, I, can, I, can, I can see Joseph and Mary like regular parents. You know how we give the child the iPad. Like you're making too much noise. Get the iPad. I can imagine Mary and Joseph walking around. They got to buy offerings and they got to give all. And they're just like, okay, Jesus, okay, stay here. Just stay here. Just stay here in the temple. We'll be back for you. But he got lost in his calling. See, they traveled a day and didn't realize they didn't have Jesus. Jesus was so lost in his calling, he didn't realize they left. See, if you get busy doing what God called you to do, it don't matter who leave, who talk about you, who don't like you, who don't, you won't even notice it, amen, because I'm focused on my assignment. Every person that leaves hurts you. You know why? Because you're not focused on what you should be focused on. Jesus is so busy asking questions. Hear me, y'all. This is a principle. The Lord said me, the Lord said this to me, that the quality of your revelation this year will be determined by the quality of your questions. I want you to write that down. The quality of the answers you get will be determined by the quality of questions you ask. But the quality of questions you ask will be determined by the humility of your heart because prideful people don't ask questions. Prideful people think they know. But the scripture says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Nudge your neighbor, say, ask a question. Amen. Ask a question. If you don't know, ask a question. They're walking and they realize, you seen Jesus? No, I thought he was with you. So they have to make a decision. They're at a crossroads. The scripture, I love Luke, y'all. Luke is a phenomenal writer. And in this particular story, Luke is the author of this story. And there are some unique elements to Luke's gospel. Number one, you know, Luke is a physician. Luke was the most intelligent of all the disciples. Luke was the most learned of all the apostles. He had degrees on degrees. Right? He didn't follow Jesus just by blind faith. He followed Jesus through science, experiment, and rationale. This was Luke. Not only was Luke the most intelligent out of all the gospel writers, uh, Luke actually writes to one particular person. While most other writers write to groups of people, you know, Matthew wrote to the Jews, and Mark wrote to the Romans, and Luke wrote to the Greeks, but he wrote to Theophilus, and of course, John wrote to everybody, but each synoptic gospel has a unique audience, and it is Luke that writes to this man by the name of Theophilus. We see it at the beginning of his salutation in the book of Acts, or Acts of the Apostles, because Luke does not just write the gospel according to Luke, he also writes the Acts according to the apostles. Luke is a master author. He is a master writer. Everything that Luke writes, he puts it in the text on purpose. So it makes me start to ask the question, why does Luke let us know how far they went? He says they were a day journey. 
They went an entire day without realizing that Jesus wasn't there. But then the scripture says when they realize Jesus isn't there, they have to make a decision. Okay, do I keep going without Jesus? Or am I willing to turn around and potentially lose time? Come on, you got a decision to make. So knowing where your relationship is, knowing that Jesus is not there, do you continue in the relationship? Or do you give the time to God as an offering? Man, I've been with him for 10 years. I ain't about to leave now. Why? Why? I love all the men looking at me like, brother, move on, move on. I don't like this church already. What do I do? I've already went this far, and all my friends are with me. How will I look if I have to turn around? What are they going to say about me? Hear me, what will I miss out on if I have to turn around? But like all of us, they had to come to a crossroads, and they made a good decision. They said, bump what everybody else is doing. I know I might be going in the opposite direction and I, might, I may stand out as a sore thumb, but I'd rather go back and get my promise. I mean, I'd rather go back and get the presence. I, I'd rather go back and get what God has for me than to act like I got it all together. So you know what they do? They make a decision to turn around. You know the word turn around means to repent. The word repent means to turn directions. So they had to literally turn around and go in the opposite direction. But hear me, it's going to be a whole day. No, 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 no. This year, I'm about to work out, okay? But it's going to be a whole day before you see any results. I'm going to counseling because I'm crazy. All right, but it's going to be a... It's going to be a whole day. What you think? You're going to turn around and he's just going to show up? It took you this long to get out here. But you got to be willing to turn around at some point and start the journey one step after one step after one step. I don't feel nothing, but I'm focused. So they decide to go back. They leave the crowd. It ain't personal. It ain't that I don't like you. It ain't that you did nothing wrong, but there's something I'm going after. They turn around and they go back. Take them a day, another day. The writer of Luke says, after three days of looking, so that's one day, two day, three days. This is five days where a 12-year-old is by himself. Now, what your 12-year-old would do? If they was at home for five days, your house would be burnt down. You would, think people, you would think stuff would be in disarray, in a mess. But when they come, watch me. This is where they, they find them. And they said, why did you do this to us? Why did you do... Now, Jesus been in the same place the whole time. He was where you left him. So if he's where you left him, why are you mad at him that he's not in the storm you're in? He said, watch me. He said, why are you looking for me? Did you not know I must be about my father's business? Now, I, I want to deal with that, but I, 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 I got to make sure I deal with the other component, but let's just deal with this here. I, you have to run your life as a business. Come on, I want you to write that down. Your relationship is a business. Did you hear me? You know, most husbands treat their wives like employees. See, lot just let it settle. All the men didn't want to laugh. They're like, huh. You can laugh. Yeah. 
But I've learned that the employee will mirror the culture of the manager. If the manager do crazy stuff, then the employee going to do crazy stuff. So if you don't like your employees, most likely there's an issue at the top. But what I'm saying is that your marriage is a, is a business. You got profit and loss. You got budgets. Jesus said before any man builds a tower, let him first sit down. Let's be honest, you didn't count before you got married. You didn't know how much nerve you was going to have to give up to be married. Hear me, your anointing, come on, I got to go. Your anointing is a business. I want you to write it down. Your ministry is a business. The gifts that God has given you so that you can bless the world, that's a business. Have you invested in your business? When was the last time you read a book? When was the last time you took a class? When was the last time you took a training? Have you invested in your business? Or do you think it's just going to happen? Your gift is a business. You have to grow your gift. The scripture says your gift will make what? Room for you. But that means your gift has to be competent and excellent and skilled. And how can it be that if you don't invest in your business? Your health. That's my business. I got to make sure that I'm eating. Are y'all here? No, you're not. How many people going to the gym tomorrow? Liars, all of you liars. Now, if you're going to go, that's good. But can you be consistent? Come on, somebody say, my body is my business. Why do you keep letting people touch your business? Oh, it got, it got tight. It got tight. Come on. If you had a cookie company, would you let anybody come in there and get your cookies? Pause. I don't like that. That didn't go the way I thought it was going to go. You don't let just anybody touch your business, so why would you let just anybody touch your body? Your body is your business. Hey, can I see it? No, because it's my business. It's my business. Come on, somebody say, it's my business. So he says, did you not know I must be about my father's business? But I want you to read that. When you get home, read it in the NIV and read it in the NASB, NIV New International Version, and read it in the NASB, the New American Standard Bible. And this is what it means. When I looked up this word, because I'm looking up, I'm trying to look up the Greek of the word business, and I don't find the word business in the Strong's Concordance. So I realized that the word business is not there in the original manuscript. It does not say, uh, I must be about my father's business. It doesn't say that. In the original Aramaic, what it says is, I must be in my father's house. Now, I want you to write it down for your notes because business and house were equivalent. There was no separation of the two. This was my business. So he said, I must be in my father's house. Hear me. If you are a believer, if you have the Holy Spirit, you must make a commitment to the house of God that if somebody come looking for you, they will find you in the house. Now, this is what Jesus was saying. Why did you, why were you looking for me? Did you not know I must be in my father's house? What he was saying is, for three days, you looked for me everywhere but the church. Isn't it a sad thing when people look for God everywhere except the church? When people can find God everywhere except the church? He said, did you not know I've got to be in my father's house? I'm going to be here. Where you going to be? Jesus was saying, I'm going to be here. The glory of the Lord, the promises of God, the power of God, it's going to be here. Where are you going to be? Now, I want you all to look around, take a look at everybody, because on the first Sunday of the year, everybody's here. Let's look at our consistency at the last Sunday of 2023. I want you to ask the question that Jesus asked, why are you looking for me everywhere? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? I want everybody to say this. Say, it's personal. 
in order for you to accomplish your assignment this year, it's got to be personal to you. But tell somebody it's not personal. It's not personal. It's not personal. I want to give you three things that Jesus did that you are going to have to do. All right? Number one, be present. I want you to write this down. In order for you not to lose what God has given you, you must be present. You must be willing to manage what God has given you with wisdom and insight. Come on, somebody say, Lord, give me wisdom, give me insight. So number one, you've got to be present. There are many things that can happen, but if you are unaware, you cannot take advantage of them. So the only way you can take advantage of an opportunity, you must be present. Number two, you must move at the word of God. Hear me, the word of God is going to be a necessity for you. You're going to have to open your ears. This is what we're praying, that every ear would be able to hear what the spirit of God is saying to the church. Now, remember this. There is something that I call um, uh, the law of correct response, meaning that when God speaks, there is a correct way to respond. I want you to write down Genesis chapter 22, verse number 1 through 3. When God spoke to Abraham, he responded immediately. The speed of your obedience determines the speed of your blessing. All right? The speed of your obedience. Hear me. Hesitate if you want to. This ain't the season to hesitate. This ain't the season to second guess. This is the season to move when God speaks. If God say lift your hands and yell, you better lift your hands and yell. If God say take off running now, don't sit there and be like, what would they say? Take off running now. If God says sow what you have in your bank account, don't worry about where the provision will come from because he will be Jehovah Jireh. You got to do what God says do. Somebody say when he says do it. When, when he say, You got to do what God says do when he says do it. You got to move in his word. Mary and Joseph are outside of the temple. Jesus is in the temple. Jesus is in the temple with dead men, Pharisees, legalistic. Mary and Joseph, they're out of the temple dealing with money, market, commerce. There is a presence outside and there is a presence inside. What we see in Luke chapter 2 are the two becoming one. Because Mary and Joseph represent wisdom. Jesus represents zeal. They must come together. Are you here? Jesus represents the innocence of being a child. While Mary and Joseph represents the experience and wisdom of being an adult. They must come together. You must keep your childlike faith, but you must also know how to balance your budget. They must, somebody say, come together. They got to come together. And that is what God is calling of you. Calling of all of us is to bring those two extremes together. And it's going to take time. It's going to take perseverance. And this is something that I want you to get in your spirit. When people start asking you, why are you working so hard on you? Why are you so focused? Why are you so determined? This is what I want you to say. <clears throat> it's not personal. Come on, stand to your feet. I want to get ready to pray over you. I want to get ready to send you home. I want to get ready for you to walk in this year with strength, with focus, with favor, with wisdom, with endurance, and with stamina. But the only way you can do that, you got to be willing to lose some friends. Hear me, I pray that the Lord gives you grace to disappoint needy people. I felt strength all the way over there. I said, I pray that the Lord gives you strength to, to say no. Change your status to, I'm unavailable. Where did we lose them? Where did he go? Some people, 2023, if you can be honest, it took a lot of stuff from you. 
You used to have a fight. You used to be strong. Man, I'm, 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 I'm going to take the world. Now people see how you doing. I'm all right. 2023, like it, like it took your strength. Maybe it took your relationships. For some of us, it may have took it, taken our money. But I believe that with the focus that you're about to walk in, you're about to get all of it back and more. But it's going to take humility for you to say, where did I lose them? And you got to be willing to what? Turn around, repent, and come to the altar. Hear me, y'all. You had a great night. We ended 2022 strong. But I want to begin 2023 stronger. There are people in this building right now. You said on the first day of the year, I'm giving God my heart, my life. It ain't just about money. I'm giving God all of me. You want to rededicate your life? For some of you, you've never been born again. You came to church. Somebody made you come today. Somebody just begged you to come today. And you came. But God is talking to you. God is calling you. God says, I want to do something significant in your life. I want to change you. I want to heal you. But you got to be willing to stop going. Stop. Turn around and meet me. Look, let's begin the new year strong. Maybe you're here, you're single. Maybe you're married. Maybe you're a child. Maybe you are older, but you say, I cannot let 2023 start without giving my heart, my life, and everything I have to Jesus Christ. We're going to begin the new year strong. Come on, somebody say amen. If you're in this building, we're going to clap for you. We're going to shout for you. We're your family. We support you. If you're in this building, I want to start this year off bold. If you know you want to rededicate your life to Christ, if you know you want to give God your life, your relationships, your body, your money, your intelligence, if, he, if you want him to be Lord over your life, do me a favor. Don't think about it. I want you to move from your seat and come down here right now. Right now. Right now. We're waiting on you. I see you. Come on. Come on. Come on. I see you. Come on. I see you. We start. Come on, bro. I believe you. I see you. We are starting this new year off right. Bless you, girl. Bless you. Come on, y'all. They're still coming. They're still coming. I appreciate y'all. Come on down. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all ain't shouting loud enough. My brother, I see y'all in the back. I got you. I'm praying for you. All right. Amen. I see you. Come on down. Wow. 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 Y'all, they're still coming. Watch the house. Watch the house. I see you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Y'all ain't worshiping. This might be your brother. This might be your sister. Come on, y'all. Give the Lord a shout of praise all over the world. Watch out, watch out. Good to see you. It's good to see you. Now, look, be patient. Thank you, brother. Be patient. Come on, sneak up here. You ain't got to wait. Hey, can, y'all, can I tell y'all the secret? The strongest people move when there's no music. I see you. Come on down. Come on down. Amen. Now, if you have the Holy Ghost, I need y'all to shout and go crazy for everybody at this altar. Y'all ain't. Wow. Wow. Proud of you, proud of you, proud of you. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna minister too much because we're already over time. I'm proud of you and you. I saw you come up, all right? The hand of God is on your life. That's why you always feel like just, uh, you, you always feel alone regardless of, hey, bless you, bless you. You always feel alone regardless of where you are. And that's because God is focusing on you, and he wants you to focus on him. But I want you to understand something. God's hand is on your life. Bro, it's good to see you. My brother came to the altar, y'all. My brother came to the altar. His hand is on your life. All right? 
and there's so much ministry here. Now, I want to say this. You're not just giving your life to Christ. You're giving your gifts to him. All right? God is demanding more out of you, and we appreciate you. I'm going to get y'all out of here. Y'all going to go home. They're going to follow uh, Miss Lisa down there and Miss uh, Vanessa. They're going to lead you to our partnership room or to our salvation room. We're going to pray for you. We're going to get your information. We're going to call you on Monday. Somebody else coming? Amen. Amen. It's good to see you. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. We're going to get your information. If you're not in town, we'll help you find the church wherever you are. All right? If you're in town, if, you're, if you live too far from here, um, even though I don't believe it's too far from here, we got people. How many people traveled an hour today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so I don't believe it's too far away. Uh, this is so cheesy, but a church alive is worth the drive. <laughs> All right. So please, we want to get your information. We want to call you. We want to love on you. But one more time, I'm going to just have y'all follow Miss Lisa and Miss Vanessa. Can we put our hands together for them real, real quick? Thank y'all so much. Come on, y'all. Y'all going to walk this way. Come on, y'all walk this way. Thank you so much. Amen. We're going to have y'all walk this way. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right there. Right there. Right there. Thank you. Calvin! Hey! Hey! My barber just gave his life to Christ! That means my haircut about to be fight! <laughs> that hair about to be dead! Alright, let's go home. You're here? You already got a relationship with Christ? But you said, bruh, I have never seen church like this. I need a church home. There are many of you, you don't have a church. I understand. Uh, church may not be a big part of your life, but I believe it's a big part of your destiny. And I believe that every believer needs a good church home. If you are in this place and you do not have a church, but you need a good church, come on, let's make the devil mad real, real quick. I would love to be your pastor. I would love to be your man of God. If you're here and you need a good church home, come on, come down to the front real, real quick. I want to get y'all out of here. I want to pray for you. I see you. I see you. If you need a good church home, amen, 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 amen. Come on down. I see you. I see you. Come on, you can get your purse. I see you. Come on. Come on, y'all. Let's shout as they come. Let's shout as they come. I see you, my sister, coming. Amen. Come on, y'all. Keep shouting. They're still coming. Bless you, woman of God. Come on down. If you need a good church home, I would love to be your pastor. I see you. All right, let's get ready to go home. I want to wait for you. I told you the strongest come when there's no music. Come on, bring the music down. You need a good church home. I would love to be your pastor. I don't know if you have anybody to cover you, to pray for you, to help develop your gifts, your skill, your anointing, and your calling, and your ministry. But I would love to see you grow in the admonition of the Lord. I see you coming. Come on, let's keep clapping. Let's keep clapping. Amen. I want to get ready to go, y'all, but I would not be uh, a good pastor if I didn't say thank you. All right? I can't wait to be your pastor. All right? I love pastoring. I love watching people grow. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Amen. You can come while I'm talking. Amen. Hear me. I love watching people grow. Stephanie, stand up here real quick. Uh, this is Stephanie Anderson. Her husband is Paul Anderson. When Steph, everybody knows this story. They go to our church. But when Stephanie first came to us, Paul will tell you, Stephanie wasn't saved. I'm talking about she didn't know God. Thank you, woman of God. She didn't know God. <laughs> she, but I saw her get saved. I saw her get married. I saw her accept her call to ministry. I saw her go to school for a divinity degree, get her master's in divinity. I saw her have a baby. I want you to understand that we want to do life with you. Thank you, Seth. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're sparkling. Go ahead. No, for real. We want to do life with you. You may not have nobody. You may be single. I want to watch you get married. I want to watch you cuss your husband out. <laughs> I, 
want to watch you grow in God. That's what a pastor is. And I can't wait to be your pastor. Father, I thank you for them that would trust us enough to join our church on the first Sunday of the year. I ask that you would make this decision supernatural for them. Show them that they made the right decision by opening doors no man can shut and closing doors no man can open. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Bishop, y'all going to follow Bishop right there. He's going to take you, get some information for you or from you. Come on, y'all. Let's put our hands together for them. Let's go home. Wow. We love y'all. Come on, keep clapping for them real quick. We appreciate y'all. I promise you, if you got saved today, I'm about to dismiss y'all. I'm about to do the benediction. So I'm a, I want to bless you. Everybody say benediction. That means the final word or the final blessing. And so uh, when, this last, uh, when those last couple leave, just close that door for me real quick. If you're walking, just wait for me one second. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. All right? But I want to give you the final blessing. Let's hold the doors real quick. We believe in the final blessing, right? You don't eat and then leave without paying the bill. And we always want to make sure that we hear that final word. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee and keep thee in perfect peace. May he make his face shine upon thee and give you favor, wisdom, and strength. As God begins a new year and a new season, Father, we decree this year a year of prosperity, honor, blessing, promotion, and favor. We thank you for all that you will do. And we seal this moment by saying amen. Now let's give God glory one more time. I love y'all. Welcome to 2023. Come on, hug somebody. You're free to go. Come on, love on somebody. I bless y'all. I appreciate y'all. The altar is open. If you need prayer for anything, if you need, bring down just a little bit. The altar is open. If you need prayer for anything, you need a word from God, you want to lay at the altar, you want to worship, the altar will be open to receive you if you need prayer.